This is part 19 of the basic Python programming tutorial for Blender users. Okay, so now we're going to have to do something a little bit different in this lesson, and that is because this is uh, the interface within Blender does not always coincide with the Python code. We know the Python code has a tendency to run a little bit behind. It's not first priority. And so one of the things that is very powerful within the interface is the ability to rotate on different boundaries or like there's not boundaries but positions here's you can rotate around the 3d cursor around the individual origins of the object medium point uh, bounding box cursor things like this but the individual origins is a powerful technique because if I come up here and I select each one of these cubes I mean planes like that and I want to rotate them around say the x-axis so I'll press RX and so they are all rotating like this, like that. However, if it was set at the median point and I rotated around X, you see they're rotating like that. But I want them to be able to rotate around the individual origins because, say, if we're using the fountains to spray water, shoot particles, launch fireworks, launch intercontinental ballistic missiles, whatever, I want to be able to rotate these angles at will however I want. So, there is a command, and this is actually one of the. Here's a command. It's called uh, bpy.type space view 3d dot set pivot point. Well, that's one way. In fact, there's all kinds of ways to try and access this set pivot point, but none of them seem to work right off the bat with individual origins. Even if you set it with individual origins, they all just mess up and don't. They don't do what they say. So I believe it's probably just not implemented yet fully, and that. It, is to be expected within Python. A lot of things just simply don't get implemented concurrently with the design within the interface. So you have to use what you can. So uh, sometimes what I use is my own set of rotations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, take, take a step back. Yes, we are. And we're going to have to take a look at some mathematics here. And I'll show you what I use for rotations. And uh, instead of using basic trig functions which well we are kind of going to use them but let's go look at let's go get a default window and let's see we'll get rid of this guy here and uh, hmm we'll just go get a different view altogether and we'll move this cursor to the center like this and then I'll add a plane this is just kind of we're just setting it up for the moment I'm going to press delete get to the center here I'm going to come up here and press a light, get a lamp in this scene, point lamp. I'll go into, uh, how come I don't see that light? Oh, because when I have a new scene, certainly not really, huh? I should see that. Let's just go into regular mode like this. And I'll give that, well, that, that'll be good enough. So all I'm really doing is I'm building us a drawing surface for the moment so I can paint onto the screen. I could just bring up another paint program of some sort but I like to goof around with this stuff sometimes so we'll go into here and you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna subdivide this thing I just subdivide them way up oh that's good enough all right and then uh, so now I have a surface and so the one I'm in here they're gonna go into uh, mm -hmm, sculpt mode oh I am and I'm gonna bring up the menu I'm gonna make my radius quite small maybe like three I don't know maybe that's good enough and I'm going to crank up the strength of like that. Let's see if this actually works. If I'm going to come over here and I'm going to see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it does. It works. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to paint for, <laughs> for the moment. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to imagine this is uh, here's the center of the plane like this. In fact, let's go into ortho mode and look at it from above. Maybe give ourselves a little bit more room. And let's see if I can clear that out. All right, we'll start from scratch like this. So imagine this is going to be the center of our graph and this is our x-axis like this and this is our y-axis like this. All right, and we want to, and this is going to be our x-y plane as if we were looking at it from straight above, straight down on top of it. All right, so here's x over here. And here's why. Yes, I could use a paint program, but <laughs> why? <laughs> okay, so um, and let's say we have a point on the plane. 
and we want to rotate around like this because I don't like maybe the way that you know the current operations work and we could use the sine and the cosine functions for doing it but I want to just do something simple let's say we have a point over here we'll mark this at let's say that's one on the x-axis and two and three on the x-axis like that and then let's say this is that's one two and three all right so we're going to make a point at three over here and two up in here and this will be our point you know normally in the xy plane that would be the point we're just going to put it up here we'll put it down here it would be the point that's a parenthesis maybe i should be using something else but you get the idea that would be three comma two all right like that I need a little let me see if I can crank the radius up a little bit see what happens if I do that no it's probably more about this lighting anyway so okay so maybe that's a bad choice but you just have to bear with it for now all right so instead of using it in the XY plane we're gonna use it differently we're gonna call this the complex plane all right and we're gonna call this x-axis it's gonna be the real axis we're gonna make it just a little R and a big R and an E for the real axis and the Y axis instead is going to be called the imaginary axis so yeah we're going to use complex numbers and for those of you who have fought with complex numbers don't worry about it they're so easy it's ridiculous all right so instead of marking our point as 3 plus 2 we're just going to mark it like this it's going to be it's actually the same as 3 plus 2i. Alright, and the reason that is, is because, and that's an i, so those are the two points, 3 and 2i are the points, instead of 3 and 2. Alright, that's our point location right there. Alright, and really what it is, since this is the real axis now, the real, this is the real number, this, is it the 3. And this is the imaginary axis, and the imaginary axis is not a y, it's an i. So it's 2 units up in y, so this is 2i and that is 3 so that would be the point 3 comma 2i and I know you're going well what is this all about what the heck is this guy doing he's driving me crazy already I hate mathematics all right but this is a very powerful and important thing to know because all throughout science and engineering comp and physics and things like that complex numbers are used so commonly that it's unbelievable and you have to know them and since a lot of what we're going to be doing in the python tutorials and our animations and things like that are very heavily math based because if you really want to do the cool stuff we have to do a lot of math all right so this is kind of your introduction all right so just you know, remember i'm an artist too and so we can do this i know we can all right so what we're going to do what are the operations within the complex number space when you're dealing with complex numbers is this is when you take a complex number when you take the complex number i when the i is just going to be this location up here one unit up on the imaginary axis that is i like that all right actually in coordinate wise you would call it zero comma i all right because there'd be zero on the imagine on the real axis and I on the imaginary axis all right so if you take just say I and you multiply this little multiplication symbol and you multiply it times I like this that's really the same as saying I squared all right there's an I and there's a little squared term like this all right that's I squared that's a little two you have to just go with it man I'm got to work in sculpt mode just because all right so and I squared in imaginary numbers happens to be equal to negative one. Now, I don't expect you to understand why or need to know why for the moment. Just remember that I squared is equal to negative one. All right, that's the important point for this lesson. I squared is equal to negative one. All right. So now what we're going to do? We're going to take our number three plus two i, and we're going to multiply it by i. All right. So since I is like nine degrees offset from the real axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it times I. So it's really what we're saying is we're going to take I and we're going to multiply it times 
3, you can hear me, so even though you can't see it, you can hear me. 3 plus 2i, you can be writing this down on your little piece of paper maybe, like this. And when I multiply i times 3, I get 3i. When I multiply i times 2i, so that would be plus, I'd get 2i squared. 2i squared. Like this. Well, i squared is the same as negative 1. So I'm going to swap that out and just make that a negative 1. So that'd be 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. So really it becomes 3i plus a negative 2, but that's really the same as saying 3i minus 2. And then if we reverse the order and put them in the normal format of, you know, the real number first and the imaginary component second, this is really negative 2 plus 3i. All right, so this, I'll just put that up here as negative 2 plus 3i. Oh, I know you can't read it, but I don't want to switch between applications. I'm going to figure out a better way to draw within the scene. I just thought maybe this would work, and I think if I had moved the light, maybe it would work a little bit more. Hang on one second. We're going to go back into object mode just for a second and grab this light and move it over here. Let's see if it does it. Oh, maybe I'm not in texture mode. Nope, that's not going to work. Solid mode. Son of a, I thought that light would do it. Okay, well, it's not doing it, so... All right, so we'll go grab the plane and go back into uh, sculpt mode. All right, so our number is negative 2 plus 3i. Well, let's go plot it. Well, negative 2 is the value on the x-axis. Oh, oh, no, it's not the x-axis anymore. We're in the complex plane. It's the real axis. All right, so there's negative 2 and plus 3i. So 1, 2, that's, oops, 1, 2, 3, like this. All right, here's our original point over here. And there's our next point here. That's negative 2 plus 3i. That's, and this is 3 plus 2i, right? This, like this. So really what we've done, we've multiplied our original 3 plus 2i number times i, and we ended up with negative 2 plus 3i, negative 2 plus 1, 2, 3i. And what we've effectively done is we've rotated our point 90 degrees in the complex plane. Okay? You got that? <laughs> All right. Well, okay, I know this is quite a diversion, but these become important diversions because we'll be using complex numbers a lot as well. In fact, when you think about a blender and when you think about Python and, and the coding behind it, you'll sometimes see that, that curious little thing called a quaternion. Well, those quaternions are based in complex numbers as well. And so we're going to have to know all about that kind of stuff. All right, so if you're don't worry if you're not inclined to the mathematics. I'm going back to the design lessons here shortly. and We'll be mostly doing design lessons, but we'll be picking up on things like this and providing you greater tool sets, not only in the design, but also in your mathematics. And then we can really have much more powerful, cool, fun stuff. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.